Call this meeting to order. It's Tuesday, May 3rd, 2011. Uh, this is a meeting of the Champaign County Board Committee of the Whole for ELUC Highway and Facilities. The time is 6.08. Roll call, please. Alex. Here. Ammons. Here. Anderson. Here. Benzel. Here. Bergson. Here. Betts. Here. Carter. Here. Coart. Present. Esri. Here. Holderfield. Here. James. Here. Jay. Here. Jones. Here. Kurtz. Here. Langenheim. Here. McGinty. Here. Michaels. Here. Mosier. Here. Nudo. Here. O'Connor. Here. Petrie. Here. Quisenberry. Here. Richards. Here. Rosales. Here. Sapp. Here. Schrader. Yes. Weibel. Here. We have a quorum. Um, were the minutes distributed for the community as a whole? <laughs> they were by email. Were they, were they not? Uh, could a motion to accept the minutes, uh, approve the minutes of the Committee of the Whole for April 7, 2011? So moved. Second by Mr. Rosales, second. second by Ms. Anderson. Sorry, moved by Mr. Rosales, second by Ms. Anderson. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Seek approval of the agenda. So moved. moved by Mr. Carter, second by Ms. Coer. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, designation of parliamentarian. Um, Ms. Busey has informed me that she'd rather not be parliamentarian. Is that not correct? Uh, Mr. Betts has graciously agreed to be parliamentarian. Is that not correct, Mr. Betts? I wasn't gracious. I said, I said you were gracious. <laughs> Therefore, I would like I'll, to... I'll do it and take impeachment. I would like to appoint Mr. Betts as our... Parliament, parliamentarian. Just don't call me out of order. Oh, I can't talk it to him then. Okay. Um, public participation. We have one so far, Mr. William Cole. Thank you very much. And um, I'm William Cope, 4018 North Lincoln Avenue. Um, I'd like to report on um, a number of um, meetings and conversations that our group have had with the Illinois Commerce Commission. And um, I'd like to talk about the, just only about the Olympian Drive Railroad Bridge. Um, firstly, the plan that was submitted to the um, Illinois Commerce Commission is not the current plan. The original plan was to connect to Route 45. Um, the current bridge will take the road to a point where it stops on a small tar and chip road just a couple of hundred yards beyond the bridge. This is um, a concern because what's been approved for that bridge is not in fact what's being built. The, the Commerce Commission also says that this is not a priority for them. Um, a priority road is a road which is not a new road, a road which already exists where there's danger and where there are, there, there's been you know, various problems with traffic. And an example of a priority road, which was given by them, is Curtis Road. So Curtis Road is at the end of a new four-lane extension which connects with Interstate 57, and that is clearly a priority. Um, also, the design is not the preferred design. They have a, the, their preferred design is called a complete streets design, which includes pedestrian access. That's not in the, the design that's there. But also another concern is that the Lincoln connection is not funded yet. It's not cleared yet. There are a lot of issues not dealt with, which will include quick take, if that's the way you decide to go. Um, it will include investigations around the archaeological evidence, which is quite substantial. And really, the bridge has to be connected with that connection. Otherwise, it, it's literally a, a road to nowhere or a bridge to nowhere. It's literally a bridge to nowhere. Um, so we also um, spoke to them about our engineering projections, the engineering drawings which show that this is a longer route than all alternative routes and that therefore this road is not likely to be used very much. People will use the New Lincoln to go straight north to Fort Harris and whatever, we, we know that. Um, 
The other issue that came up in the conversations is that this is a budgeted to be a $19.6 million contribution by the Illinois Commerce Commission. Um, they will only fund up to $12 million, um, given the way things are going. And beyond that, it's 100% local responsibility. And even up to $12 million, the next the, the local government has to supply another 40%. They are very worried about ongoing costs. Um, particularly in this oil crisis at the moment. Um, so that's going to be something which is going to have to be worn. And unless we're really clear about that, I think that's a very, very important commitment. Um, finally, we've decided on the basis of this information and the advice from the Commerce Commission that when the county petitions for this bridge to be funded, we will file a counter um, petition with the Illinois Commerce Commission. And we think the case that we've got against this bridge is very, very strong. So in this, I'm really just mentioning um, just one issue, the bridge. Of course, we know with this development, there are a lot of other issues. But I thought it was important, given the fact that you people were going to consider this intergovernment agreement tonight, that there are a lot of wild cards in this, very serious problems which haven't been dealt with in a proper way in terms of funding, in terms of planning, in terms of design. And before you commit to it, this stuff has to be thought through incredibly well. We know this has been a process which has been biased and in a whole lot of ways, in missing information. And for us, these, these meetings we've had with the Illinois Commerce Commission have been quite a remarkable revelation. And I'm not sure whether the people here on the county board fully know the, the Commission's position on these issues. So thank you very much for your time. Ms. Dorothy Newman. I'm Dorothy Newman. I live in downtown Urbana. And I'm very interested in the map that's before you tonight. Um, I hope that you will oppose this map. It does not fit the, cri the five criteria that you set forth in your resolution when you set up the redistricting commission. Um, Mr. Levy admitted that the map that's before you this evening does was not the one that's the closest to the criteria that you set up. So I hope you would oppose this map this evening. And I thought that Mr. Isles, the computer programmer who spoke on the 26th of April, had a very good idea when he said, why don't you send three maps, uh, probably those that best conform to your criteria. And I don't think you have to have a straight up or straight down vote on any of those maps. There's nothing that says the committee of the whole cannot adjust those maps to conform to what they think is more fair. More fair in population, more fair in not splitting up precincts and cities and townships and giving um, better representation to minorities. So I hope that you'll vote this map down and then find a much fairer map. Thank you. Is there further public participation? <coughs> okay, we'll close that. Uh, communications. I have one. Uh, the lights for the parking lot do not work. So if you're concerned about uh, getting out to your car when it's dark, you should perhaps leave early, around 8 o'clock. Um, uh, I believe Mr. Reinstein is going to be out there uh, with the lights on one of his vehicles to help people out uh, when he's not here and after it's dark, so he can help you out there. But again, we're still trying to get Amron to fix the, the problem so we can have lights again, which were blown out during the storm uh, about a week ago. Any other uh, communications? Mr. O'Connor. Is there any possibility we can just adjourn at 8 o'clock for change? <laughs> <laughs> like that. It's possible, but we have no 8 o'clock rule. <laughs> Mr. Nudo. Just as a follow-up, if... Uh, Microphone, please. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> as a follow-up, if any Democrats want to leave before the remapping, if it's not 8 o'clock, <laughs> it's okay with me. Any serious communications? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, let's move on to environment and land use. Thanks, 
I don't care who you are, that's fine. I think we should uh, provide uh, flashlights for all the public when they leave. Or do we have we have no money in the budget for that? Sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Elock. Um, we have uh, actually just one item tonight: uh, a recreation and entertainment license, uh, recreation and entertainment license, Eastern Illinois a ABAT Incorporated for live band, music, motorcycle, rodeo location. The location is the Rolling Hills Campground at 3151A, uh, Country Road 2800 East, Penfield, Illinois, on June 3rd, 4th, 5th, uh, 2011. Do I have a motion? So moved. Uh, Mr. J, second by Ms. Anderson. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mon no monthly report. I have no chair's report. Uh, John, do you have anything? No. The monthly report was handed out. Though. Was handed out. Okay. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. It's uh, at your desks. Uh, I don't have any any other business. None. Uh, every, I guess this goes on. It goes on. Okay. Thank you. That's it. We get out of here by eight o'clock. Watch. Good evening. We have three agenda items for our way in transportation. Uh, first of all, it'll be the monthly report for the county and township motor fuel tax claim for April 2011. Move to place on file. Second. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Next, we'll go into the county engineer's report. Okay, item one is resolution authorizing the county board to chair to sign an intergovernmental agreement with Urbana for the improvement of Lincoln Avenue. Adoption. Second. Second. Open for discussion. Pius. Uh, Mr. Blue, of clarification, is the resolution number on the top of page two, is that correct? I said on the top of in paragraph I'm sorry paragraph 9 is that what you're speaking about uh, guys? page 2 second sentence second line I'm sorry if I recall that I got no. the saying it might be correct yeah that was actually the uh, resolution where you guys just approved the project with Lincoln Avenue that should actually read uh, resolution number 7680 that's the actual resolution where the uh, where the purple alignment was chosen as the alignment. So I have the resolution here with I me. I would move to, uh, to amend the uh, contract or the amend the resolution to read seven, yes. So so what's number? 7680. 7680 yeah. instead of 7663. Right, and that should be in two, yeah, in all places, in all, right? In all places where it has a uh, it's in, Wherever in the, in, the, in, the, in the resolution then. Right. right. Second. Second. Okay, it's open for discussion. Patsy? Uh, yes, I have a couple of information questions for Mr. Blue. Uh, first page. Uh, third sorry, point of order. This is a, we're on the amendment, I think. We're discussing oh, the amendment. Sorry. sorry, you're right. Okay, any discussion, James? Yeah, I'd like to point out that it's important to have this correct because that resolution was the one where we insisted that the purple line moves no further south and it was designated right. to protect the landowners in that area. Yep. Okay, any other discussion? Okay. Uh, this is on the amendment to the oh, no. to change this resolution number. Okay, all in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. aye. <laughs> it approved. Okay, we're back to the motion as amended. Patsy? 
sorry, I lost my concentration back there. Okay, um, first page, third paragraph. Um, why is that necessary in the agreement? That it gives us the authority? Is that Which paragraph are you speaking of? Um, well, third, third paragraph, Six. whereas 65 ILCS 511 91.2-1. That's something that the lawyers put in there just to state which part of the statutes give the authority for, the, uh, for us to enter into this agreement. Yeah, but this talks about jurisdiction and maintenance of roads and streets. We're not doing maintenance. Uh, there will be maintenance after it's done, and there's obviously jurisdictional issues about Lincoln Avenue. Uh, okay, but I thought that was taken care of later on in the resolution where it clearly states that maintenance. This is the exact same language you have in the Olympian Drive. Um, I, I haven't seen an intergovernmental agreement that didn't have this okay. uh, phrase in it. I don't know exactly why it's there because I'm not a lawyer, but the lawyers put it in there. Okay, okay, fine. There's um, no engineering jargon in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Alan? Uh, wait, I have a couple of oh, yeah, questions. Oh, you Thank you. Uh, page five, paragraph seven C. I just want to be clear, the reading of that is turning all the jurisdiction for police and fire during this construction over to Urbana. Is that accurate interpretation? All it's saying is that um, the jurisdiction, there's not going to be any transfer of the jurisdiction for police and fire uh, just because we're, the city of Urbana is going to have Lincoln Avenue. So until the road is actually annexed into the city, the jurisdiction is not going to be affected by the fact that the city owns the roadway. So the city's not actually annexing out into this area. So whatever jurisdiction has the police and fire now is going to continue to have it until the city is annexed out to that point. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Alan. Uh, yeah, Jeff. Um, have we heard in public participation concerning the Commerce Commission who came down here <coughs> to look at the, uh, the bridge? Uh, I have a couple of questions. One, uh, is he correct in the criteria that the Commerce Commission uh, puts on a, on a bridge? Uh, sex. Clarification, I have a question. Um, if you'd like me to answer that question, I can tell you I have had many, many, many conversations with Mike Stead, who is exactly who Mr. Cope is talking about. This is in their 2013 plan. Um, whether or not it's a priority for them, I guess he's talking about typically the uh, grade crossing protection fund is there to upgrade at grade crossings where there are high incidents of accidents between uh, trains and automobiles. Obviously there's no existing road right now. So is this a gigantic priority um, as far as there being accident rates? No, because there is no existing road. Is it a priority? Is it in their 2013 ICC plan? Absolutely it is. Okay, and the reason I asked that question is simply because even though we're talking about Lincoln Avenue, if something happens to that bridge fund or the money for that bridge, Lincoln Avenue is what? A dead end to nowhere. If that bridge is, uh, for some reason, uh, uh, not, not built. Right. So, so what would be the point of having Lincoln Avenue go out to nowhere if the Commerce Commission says, well, we're not going to give you money for this bridge? And that's why I asked that question. It does have plenty to do with what we're, we're voting on tonight. Well, I have a letter on my desk uh, directly from the Illinois Commerce Commission showing their plan, and it clearly has this bridge in their plan. <coughs> Uh, uh. Thank you, Madam Chair. On page five, I just want to mention in the last paragraph that we inserted the acquire the land by 2013. That was done for the reason of giving every all parties the uh, opportunity to negotiate in good faith uh, so that we don't get to imminent domain and quick take. And so everybody who looks at this document will know that's exactly where, where the timelines are and that all parties work toward that timeline so we did, don't get to a, a situation where eminent domain um, might occur. So that's, uh, that's just a point I would like to make. The second 
unless Jeff, you wanted to. No, that's comment? no, great. Uh, Mr. Quisenberry was uh, was looking at when we first had this um, uh, document in front of us to ensure that the purple route didn't have major deviations from what we saw. Uh, James, do you have any concerns or anything you want to bring up tonight? I think I covered that earlier. With it? Mm -hmm. That's all. Uh, any more discussion? Roll call. <clears throat> okay, Alan. Alan? Of order, can we? Point of order, I, I think this is not a question from Mr. Kurtz. This is a question from the audience. I don't think it should be allowed. Okay, volunteering. Actually, as a, as a matter of parliamentary procedure, first the chair defers, doesn't make the decision to ask the parliamentarian. Parliamentarily, it's out of order um, because someone already asked for the roll call, and once you've asked for the roll call, there can be no further discussion. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay, can we have a all in favor of roll call? Do we need? Just call a roll. Ready? Ready? Call. Alex. Yes. Ammons? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benzel? No. Berkson? Yes. Betts? Yes. Carter? Yes. Coder? Coort? Yes. Esri? No. Holderfield? Holderfield? Yes. James? No. Jay? No. Jones? Yes. <coughs> Kurtz? No. Langenheim. Yes. McGinty. Yes. Michaels. No. No. Nudo. Yes. O'Connor. Yes. Petrie. No. Quisenberry. Yes. Richards. Yes. Rosales. Yes. Sapp. No. Schrader. Yes. Weibel. Yes. Motion carry. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the uh, resolution awarding bids of the 2011 bituminous materials for various townships in Champaign County. Um, we had the uh, bid for the bituminous materials on April the 26, 2011. Uh, you have a uh, tabulation of the bid tabs there before you. Um, low bid was from Ileana Construction out of uh, Champaign-Urbana. The prices that you see there are per gallon prices. Um, have not changed since uh, 2010. Very similar. There may be a penny or two here or there, but very, very similar prices to what we received in 2010. And I would ask that you approve those bids. Move to approve. Second. Been moved and second. It's open for discussion. Um, Jonathan? Madam Chair, is there a resolution number of this? Um, I see Mr. Weibel left room this doesn't have a resolution number. they don't have numbers at committee of the whole there will be a number when you vote on it at county board any other discussion okay steve thanks rain jeff i was just curious what's the if you will call it standard rate on oil now like it used to be like 35 hundredths of a square yard back in the last century when yeah. i was working we're still Three tenths okay. per square yard, something like that. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I have, it. I have no other business. Any other business uh, for the highway department? Uh, okay, then. Uh, chair does not have a report, and we're going to play some. Um, 9B1 on the um, 
No. It's not B2 okay. on the consent agenda. Okay, nothing else. Right. Thank you. Good evening, this is the Committee of the Whole for County Facilities. Um, we have some uh, significant business uh, this evening. Um, Mr. Reinhardt's going to update us on various issues as well. Uh, the project update for 202 Art Bartel uh, construction project. Um, the office areas and the uh, county clerk's area will be receiving final inspections this week. Uh, almost all finishes, ceilings, and everything is it will be done. There is small um, minor electrical and trim work to be finished in the maintenance bay. All exterior concrete is poured, drives, um, a couple of sight lighting, a little sight lighting. But obviously, we've been delayed outside with all the rain we've had the last couple of weeks. So, um, weather permitting, earthwork, everything will be completed, completed within the next week or so. Questions? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, the monthly project budget report, I'd receive a, a motion to receive in place on file. Moved by Mr. James, seconded by Ms. Ammons. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same. Motion carries. Um, the next three items are kind of interrelated. We have the presentation of alternative solutions for the East Campus Stormwater Management Project, as well as um, a contract with Burns and Clancy and um, storm water management issues. Okay. Um, alternative solutions for these campus stormwater project. Um, you want to bring sure. Burns Clancy? Are they here? Yes. Chris Billings, Burns Clancy, please. Thank you, Alan. Um, I'm Chris Billing with Burns Clancy and Associates, uh, just down the street here in Urbana, a couple of minutes away. Uh, we have been working, I'll, I'll try to keep this brief and then allow questions and see if I can answer your questions that way. Uh, we have been working on stormwater management and drainage issues on the this county east campus for um, probably going on 15 years, various projects marched uh, throughout the development of the site over the uh, past part of time. This project is being um, required now due to the um, due to the the new building essentially that we uh, have have done some planning in in the storm water management plan that the city of Urbana accepted on the order of eight years ago dealing with the northern watershed here on the campus uh, and so the project now is to continue some improvements that were started then to actually do the, to complete stormwater management uh, or to at least advance it to another step to catch up with development that has been going on. Uh, there was a plan, as I said, developed uh, on the order of eight years ago and uh, advanced and portions done five years ago and things like that. There's now an opportunity with this to, to take a different approach and a different look, and that's what the, um, what the project essentially would involve at this, at this immediate stage. I don't know if I have a... I have a large exhibit, but it may still be too small to be able to see um, from any real distance in the room. But we have on the order of 31 acres, we're dealing with overall some development has, a, it has occurred in the you know, southern portion of that northern 31 acre watershed, uh, which is now how we're going, we're now the subject of the project to advance. So. I think you've seen, uh, they have seen a, a description, a brief description. Alan, is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Yes. Okay. And so we, we now have, we have basically the, the plan that was laid out and developed and started at some number of years back was mostly uh, straight conveyance system and stormwater detention basins. Uh, much of the detention has already 
been constructed as a part of the fleet maintenance building and is out there on the uh, north side of the site. Um, we can continue in that fashion or with progressing with, with, with continuing that plan on, on here to catch up and through time or we can take another approach and, and uh, try to use some more of the best management practices and green strategies that are more available to us than they were, say, 10 years ago, the advent of what we're doing with, with an attempt to evaluate which process is going to be more cost effective. What can we do for a cheaper price and maybe some other, um, other benefits as well from it. So the, the, what's the first, I guess, the first task of the first phase is to advance a preliminary advanced stormwater management modeling taking new concepts in uh, into account and then comparing the two different approaches at a, just a preliminary de design scheme and level of detail and then preparing cost estimates and we'll look at both construction cost estimates and then make make an attempt to project operating maintenance costs of the two different approaches as well and what would be considered so at that at, at the conclusion of this initial step then to have two different views two different approaches uh, to the same level of of analysis that you could make an informed decision about whether to go one direction go another direction or actually take a composite even could be pieces of both and make a hybrid and continue w with the project but it will be able to make a better informed decision about really what makes the most economic sense and other other goals and uh, as well from a stormwater management strategy and standpoint so I guess I guess with that maybe if there's some pointed questions I can address some questions mr. James so are, are some of the plans going to increase the size of the tiles that's taking the water away from there because on these ponds that you're talking about I've seen some ponds built in our area out in Rantoul and with the last few rains we've had I've seen them overflow their banks I mean they've gone out into the farm fields and what have you and I know the area in question is a low lying area because when the nursing home was built we had numerous water problems from what I recall so I was more along the line that maybe there would be some uh, elevation done and some tiles put in to, to run the water whether it go to uh, uh, the system out there that was put in in Southwood, I think, or is it going to go to another nearby creek, river, whatever we have? But from what I hear, yours because with all those buildings and blacktop and the runoff is going to be like the range we've had would be enormous, I would think. So there needs to be a place to channel that water. In my mind, would that be such a with it being such a low lying area out there? Am I somewhat correct? Well, that is correct, and and to give you a little bit of detail, the uh, there actually are, th are three outlet points for this northern watershed. There are two storm sewers that go across uh, Main Street to the north and and go up to the tracks and then and come along and cross under the tracks. Uh, there's a third connection that routes that would route it if these are interconnected then through the detention basins that have been constructed there north of the fleet maintenance facility that has an outlet over to the storm sewer system that's along Learman that was put in when uh, five six years ago when Learman improvements went in so the, the the original goal of the project then was construct some stormwater detention here interconnect these three outlets and then the stormwater management plan that was developed in the past uh, was developed under city of Urbana ordinances and they've reviewed and approved that concept so you will actually have three outlets that are interconnected it all go essentially all go north and drain to the tracks and underneath it's all the same watershed it's just three different routes that get there uh, the area in the back particularly you're talking about that's low yeah there's for part of the route from from Main Street south along Art Bartell there's an 18 inch storm sewer so it, that goes so far and then it's a 12 inch and that doesn't even go to the low areas anymore so the the infrastructure that's in place there right now is is not sufficient it really is and so so part of the project then ultimately would be not only connecting that but bringing bringing some sort of conveyance outlet 
to the south so we actually can take not only the water that's there, but the increased runoff that we're going to get with the new roof and, and paving uh, that we expect. And you also would be set up for ultimately, I mean, it can be sized ultimately for continuing development. The idea, the concept of, so, so that's the conveyance approach and detention, which, which is a necessary thing to pay attention to. The, the other alternative to look at um, with the best management practices is a way of, of reducing the, the peak volume, the peak flow rates of what we have to deal with uh, for conveyance or for detention, to reduce the volume, reduce those peak flow rates. So the infrastructure we put in could be smaller and maybe still serve the same size storm if we take care of some of that potential drainage on site through either you know, pervious pavements, um, bioswales, rain gardens, cisterns, there's, there's a variety of techniques we can use that will reduce that peak. So the size of the infrastructure that would have to go in and the amount of the water that would have to be managed could be reduced. And so that's what, that's what the, the, the analysis of looking at the two different approaches, simply the conveyance and the detention, which is somewhat established and we have a good chart for where, where that's going and or implementing some looking at a, a more green best management of practice approach to the watershed and what what can we do in that fashion in order to reduce the cost of what would be built mr. Mosher does all that water go to the saline eventually off that's north end or is part of it going to go south no, it all goes to the north. It all does go to the saline. Where's the outlet for that? Um, as I remember, once it crosses the tracks, it, it comes up, and I believe on in the old uh, the older part of the landfill up there, there's a there's a, a ravine, a drainage connection that hooks into the saline, and that's that's the route it goes now. Yeah, so we're not we're not changing. I mean, actually, once it hits, once we hit Main Street, we're not changing actually the route of the conveyance that happens today at all. But it it does. It continues across Main. It has to comes down and crosses the tracks. I think somewhat here, and then there's there's underground conveyance north of of Main Street or north of of University Avenue. So there's no chance any of that water is going to go on east along 150 or through that Walmart property up past Aaron's no that's a completely different watershed mr. sap um, I think it's important to understand that the reason why and and uh, I sat with the group with uh, Patty and Alan and Deb that discussed this the reason why we're looking at this and going two routes at simultaneously is to determine what the best construction cost is if green from what we understand has not only the advantages of being green but it also has a potential re reduced cost in construction we have to we have to have the agreement with Burns and Clancy to at least get us to that point so we have to look at them together get to the decision point do we go and continue with the green or back to our traditional plan that we we have used throughout the rest of the campus so just kind of as a background is why we're asking for the simultaneous approach on steps one, two, and three, so. Etsy? Uh, just to add a little information beyond what Mr. Billing did to Mr. James' question, as an example, if that design build building had had a couple of interesting aspects to it, such as uh, permeable concrete instead of all that concrete that's just been laid recently if they had had a cistern taking the water off the shed of the roof that would have minimized greatly some of the issues that we're contending with and figuring out how to handle the stormwater here in the north campus area so doing some of those things as the county progresses in their building or covering surfaces with parking lots etc is um, a very important way for us to consider going because the rules are coming down from EPA to 
manage stormwater and these methods as a priority over the old methods of 70 feet of box culvert, which is the original um, concept for the North Campus running parallel to Main Street. Other questions from committee members? Thank you. Thank you. The next item is a contract with Burns Clancy and Associates for engineering services that you have on your desk this evening. Um, Chair will entertain a motion. Moved by Mr. Sapp. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Was that Patsy? Did you second it? Yeah, she's got my voice. No, I didn't. <coughs> I'll give it that to Mr. James. Voice. Discussion. <laughs> Seeing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion, aye. motion carries. Um, if Mr. Reinhardt could update us on the Champaign County autopsy space issue. If you'll notice in your, uh, on page 27 of the agenda, there's a, a letter from MSA Professional Services, or the architects on record for the construction of the 2R2 Art Bartel project. Um, after we had our last meeting, I, I approached them to make sure that we were, knew exactly what we needed to do to actually perform autopsies in there. Uh, that letter, this letter is uh, their reply. What's not, not stated in there is I believe that uh, we do not have to change, uh, apply for any type of um, different building usage. Zoning is all still accurate for the county uses. And uh, their recommendations to, uh, and requirements. And on prior to that, on page 26, after um, Mr. Northrup and I uh, met, we discussed, we crafted this letter to uh, say that uh, we believe that all of these items, one, two, four, and five, um, will be met as required and that the recommendation stated in item, item two, although are desirable, are not required to perform all autopsies in this building. So. Everyone understand what's going on here? No. Okay. Okay. Mr. Mr. Weibel, what don't you understand? Um, the additional fifteen to twenty thousand dollars cost, is that for all of number, all of one, two, three, four, five, or just number two? Basically, that's number two. Just number two. So yes. if we don't do number two, it doesn't, no extra cost, correct? Other than what's already been reported last month's meeting, right. that's correct. Right, I'm talking about today. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Ms. Pete's, uh, Petrie and Ms. Ammons, you both had your hands up. What was your question? Oh, I have a I have a couple of questions. If we don't do number two, um, is it going to become a situation that in two or three years that Mr. Northrop comes back and says, whoops, uh, we should have been doing this originally and I'm discovering that as I'm using the, the room? Mr. Northrop, did you catch the question? Yes, yes. No, actually, I don't believe so. Our morgue, actually, the way it's planned now without these changes is almost identical to McLean County's facility they use now. And basically, I view these changes. The example that was given by the architect basically was something he got off the Internet. I have a copy of it as well. Their recommendations and requirements that are put out by a company that sells the equipment for a morgue and so they put that out there in my opinion of course if if I had the option of having the Cadillac of morgues sure if no price was if price wasn't an option we could do a lot of different things but just doing what we're doing will suffice for us to be able to do autopsies and actually some of these recommendations like the ceiling tiles are in my opinion out of line because that's not what they do in other places and if they have a problem with the ceiling tile they don't they just change out the ceiling tile and it's not actually a problem because of the, the autopsy. It's a problem because what's above the morgue in the other facility leaks on the ceiling tiles, and they have to replace them in that, in that morgue. It's not because of the autopsies themselves. So I don't know of any reason other than normal wear and tear that we would have on any other building that we would need to do anything down the road. May I have a follow-up yes. question? Um, I'd like to pull back um, 
to what you presented to us previously on the costs, and I was reminded of that from the minutes, which was roughly $20,000, which you said you would be able to cover from your own budget. Do I remember correctly? Yes. It actually, one of the prices, that was for the autopsy sink itself, which is a special sink. Right. Um, it actually came in cheaper than the original bid I had. I was actually able to find a third bidder that was cheaper. So it actually came in cheaper than that. Now the trick I'm running into is the longer it takes to put the sink in, I'm still doing autopsies in Bloomington and paying a fee over there. So right. as that money comes down, so the sooner it gets done, I should be able to cover it. So. And... Um I think I remember a question Mr. Betts had about a 10% overrun on the cost of the wrong size fan. That wasn't my question. That was me. Oh, sorry, Mr. James. Has that been settled? Does anybody know? In my mind, that markup. Okay. The change the change order on the exhaust fan was approved after your last meeting pursuant to what you approved at your last meeting. You're welcome. Mr. Mr. Wagner, uh, the ceiling tile, are they tiles like this? Uh, okay. Similar, it's yes. Easily swapped out? Though. Yes. Okay. They're fairly cheap. So and clearly you could do this in the future if you wanted to go that route. Yes. And also I see you can also apply the, uh, the, the epoxy paint. I guess the only thing that is, you know, a possibility is the, the cabinets. Right. Uh, do you know the difference between the cost of wood cabinets and uh, the plastic laminate? I'm sure the stainless steel would be very expensive. I don't know the cost between the cabinets. I'm not in favor of the cabinets that they recommend in here just because I think if any moisture gets behind the, the laminate that's on them, they tend to bubble or crack. So are you okay and with so, the wood cabinets? Yes, yeah, I am personally, yes. All right, thank you. Yes, Mr. Alex. What I think you mentioned this to some extent a minute ago with the exhaust fan, but what's the state of the changes that we authorized the last time around? Um, the changes that were authorized last time, we've actually ordered the sink. It's coming in. It's being made or whatever. We're waiting. I th Alan, do you want to talk on the rest of the stuff? You probably know better than I do. Yes, the other uh, uh, exhaust fan has been installed already. Okay. The, the, specifically with regard to the sink, are there plumbing like significant plumbing changes required for that i mean do they have to cut the slab to put in additional drains and venting and so forth or no significant changes at all okay so either the slab wasn't poured yet or it's going someplace where there's uh, existing it will not require uh slab is in place it will not require floor cutting or anything okay and then it was one follow-up it looks to me like uh except for the cabinets there's nothing here that couldn't be addressed at comparable cost later right we're basically talking about coatings and 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 ceiling tiles and things which you could just as well go in two years from now if there was a problem and add right that is correct okay thank you mr esri uh, just a point of clarification the new plumbing line though the upsize plumbing line has that already been taken care of no that's approximately 25 feet long and we'll, it will not be put in until the sink is ready to be installed. okay it, it just hasn't just they haven't even put it in yet okay that's correct thanks any other questions thank you uh, physical plant monthly report there is uh, any questions once again for your information there's nothing out of line here at this point I need to point out I don't think Entertain a motion to receive and place on file. Moved by Ms. Emmons, seconded by Mr. Rosales. Uh, discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carries. The Brooklyn Energy Lighting Retrofit Project update. We are uh, one week away from completing, um, at the end of our program, for the EEP grant we received. Um, we will be submitting final documents. Uh, probably Wednesday next week submitted to the state. We are continuing to work on the uh, EECBG, I think I said that right, grant, which is administered to the Regional Planning Commission. Uh, that uh, grant program will last probably through the winter for us to, as we travel around and um, we are virtually removing all T12 light bulbs from this building, replacing them with TH, electronic balance, adding motion sen occupancy centers where possible. Uh, we have ordered and are waiting for um, 
new high bay, high efficiency lighting for the gymnasium, which is going to be a major uh, cost savings for us in our utility bills. Those uh, items should be in the next two to three weeks, and we will start installation coordinating with the uh, gym programs, of course, from the park district. Questions? Mr. Alex. Do we have to, how are we disposing of the old fluorescents that we're pulling out? Is that a significant cost to have those disposed of? Um, it is a cost. I'm not sure if we're going to classify it significant or not. Regardless, uh, to comply with state rules, we have to dispose of them uh, through a carrier. And we've been trying to find the most economical way to do that. Fortunately, the as I understand it, according to these grant programs we are being funded through, we can um, not use them, cannot use them in this building again, but we can uh, recycle and reuse them in other facilities. So we're going to get as much use out of them as we can. Then they will be boxed and shipped off. And I believe our current supplier right now is Tepper Electric. They uh, they give us the best price for recycling. Also, oh, they 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 the supplier of the new bulbs is, re is taking the old ones first. It just turns out to be this time, yes. Okay. But we checked with multiple suppliers and uh, recyclers about. Our best place to do it at. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Ms. Petrie. It's just a thank you for moving along so well on the project and getting the, excuse me, getting the grant funding to help pay for it. Thank you. Ms. Ammons. For the gymnasium, does the park district participate in that portion of um, the replacements in the gym in uh, any way? No, they do not. No. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, next item is the courthouse finial update. I promised you last month we would get an update, and so we're going to get an update. Uh, if, if you have looked at it, we have some issues that have been resolved, some that haven't. If you could summarize for the members of the body. Certainly. Um, on page 32 of your agenda is just a um, chronicled history of what we have dealt with. Um, I would like to add that I did receive a uh, an email this morning from finally from contact from uh, one of the I believe it was Coppercraft suppliers, and uh, they are starting to step forward and they're going to uh, in the next day or so with after official contact and request we will move ahead and see what we can do about getting it uh, looked at to be repaired and or replaced. Questions from committee members? Yes, Mr. Quisenberry. Yeah, I see that there's information on here about assessment of um, why, why the spire uh, failed. So I assume that uh, when it's replaced um, in the future, it'll be able to suffer through a few lightning strikes before it falls over? <laughs> we certainly hope so, yes. <laughs> Mr. Weibel. Well, I think that's really an important question because clearly the we've discovered a weak link, maybe the weakest link in it, and we certainly want to strengthen that, so hopefully that, it may still be the weakest link, but it'll be stronger than before, and it will stand whatever happened to it. So I don't want to put the same thing back up there, because it's likely the same thing could happen to it, and without a warranty. Uh, you're absolutely correct. First of all, it was not a lightning strike. Well, we believe it was high winds that took, okay. And it did break, uh, just <coughs> right in half, almost where the base transisted, or uh, yeah, to the uh, round spire on top. And we are going to talk with uh, the architects on record who had the initial design and make sure that they consult with the manufacturers to make sure it's either repaired or replaced correctly so that we do not have this failure. We're going to do the best we can to make sure it doesn't happen again this way. And there will be a new warranty under whatever they do? Or an extended mm. warranty? <laughs> we can certainly ask for it. We'll see what we can come up with. Any other questions from committee members? Uh, okay. There's no chair's report, and um, the other matters will be taken up at full board.
Okay, the next item on the agenda under other business is a decision regarding the uh, redistricting map uh, which was sent to us uh, from the redistricting commission which is plan 1E revision 1. The way I would like to do this is I think we should have a motion to accept the map as the uh, new redistricting map. Um, we'll have an up-down vote on that and after that we'll have a, a, a uh, motions a single motion or several motions to send back it, either it passes that it's the map if it fails then we'll have motions to uh, send back uh, ideas plans from the board on how the Commission could improve on the maps so I'll make a motion to accept the map. mr. James made a motion is there a second sure. second by mr. J miss Hol miss Holderfield Discussion. <laughs> That's for roll call. We will have a roll call when we get to the vote. Is there any discussion on the map? <coughs> Mr. Levy is here. If you want it, he can make a presentation on it or not. Uh, Mr. Quisenberry. Yes, I, I will be voting against this map because I believe uh, intrinsic to some of the rules we provided to the commission, it had results that I. I think do not preserve communities of interest and in fact um, divide communities to a degree that they should not be divided and so I will not support this map further discussion Ms. Holderfield I had uh, some question regarding the um, the packing and stacking and cracking and all that I'm not very well informed on it so I I went to the ACLU site and um, just for informational purposes, thought it would be interesting to share because I know that was something that was of concern. Um, and from what I understand, the uh, commission has followed all of the rotor, voter rights uh, according to the way that was written. So if you don't mind, just bear with me for uh, just a few minutes. It says, what are some of the techniques used in redistricting plans to dilute minority voting strength? Three techniques frequently used to dilute minority voting strength are cracking, stacking, and packing. Cracking refers to fragmented concentrations of minority population and dispersing them among other districts to ensure that all districts are majority white. Stacking refers to combining concentrations of minority population with greater concentrations of white popu population, again to ensure that districts are majority white. Packing refers to concentrating as many minorities as possible in as few districts as possible to minimize the number of majority minority districts. All of these techniques may result in a districting plan that violates the Voting Rights Act as well as a 14th Amendment. Other techniques have also been used to affect a group voting strength, questionable purging of regulation rules, moving polling places, administering difficult registration procedures, annexing areas, decreasing the number of voting machines in minority areas, and threatening reprisal for voting. Now, from what I can understand about how this process was followed, the way that reads, it doesn't look like to me that any cracking, stacking, or packing has occurred. Now, someone, I think, uh, before had disagreed and said that it, there was packing, I believe. Now, when I asked questions before, it was, we, were, we followed the uh, Voting Rights Act, we followed state and federal guidelines. So, can someone maybe explain to me exactly how we were cracking, packing, or stacking? Mr. Nooter, you have a comment, no. question? Uh, Mr. Levy, do you have a response to that? I'm sorry, actually, Mr. Levy, Mr. Noodle's causing problems and making me change sorry, his name. Mr. NATO. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it is Mr. Levy. Um, in regards to your, your comment, um, 
I guess I, I, I'm not aware of the, the concerns that were addressed regarding cracking, stacking, packing. The way that the uh, commission dealt with that issue uh, is, is one test. We were only allowed, there are three possible tests that are, that are outlined in the ACLU document. They're, they're often referred to as the Gingles factors based on a Gingles court case. Uh, the one that we did use uh, w w was a rule, so we did try to uh, comply with the Voting Rights Act, and we, we did find one test that we were able to use. Um, it was based on a compact uh, district, a, dev a visually compact district, um, as, as well as other, and then the voting age population, so 18 and over uh, by race. So we used that information to, uh, to provide information on whether, uh, how, how we fit those criteria. Is that it? So basically you're saying that none of the maps that have been presented to the redistricting commission violates the voters' writing, or the voters' rights act. A point of order, he is not an attorney and he cannot uh, I answer would, that question. Yeah, uh, Mr. Levy, I suggest you don't answer that question. Okay, but from, from what the way that the maps have been, um, let me try and ask that question, um, <laughs> it doesn't appear as if that's, a violation. It doesn't appear that that's actually what happened. Is that a question that's fair I, to ask? I think that could be your opinion. I, I don't think uh, we should ask him of his opinion on that on legal question. Okay. Uh, so our, our, unfortunately, we don't have legal counsel here from the from the counties. They would be the person to ask about that. I think. And Mr. Levy is not. I'm not going to put him in that position. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Alex. I think maybe I could follow up on that, uh, Mr. Levy, if you can stay at the microphone. Uh, I think one of the basis, uh, one of the bases for concern about packing, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, was that the uh, majority minority district is the largest in population of any of the districts uh, in Map 1E. Is that, am I remembering that correctly? I, I guess I'd have to refer to a map, but I, so I, I'm not certain. But but if anyone has the maps, uh, you very well could be correct. Okay. Okay. That that is my understanding as to uh, the primary factor that raised concerns about uh, packing is that the uh, majority minority district did have the largest population of the of the districts on this particular map. Mr. Rigetti. I'm not sure if this is a question for uh, you as Chair Pius or for our new parliamentarian, Tom. Um, I was pleased to hear you say uh, that um, if the um, vote on this map fails, that it would go back, we would compile a list of specifics per the request of, I think, both uh, Chair Winkle and Vice Chair Pat of the Redistricting Commission and go back in that direction. And the reason I, I'm, I'm asking for, I guess, clarification or assurance of that is that if I thought that there was a chance that this map would fail and that this process would be done, I would vote for the map because of my interest in seeing the process completed if I am comfortable and certain that this will go back to the commission with specific recommendations per the commission's request then on a personal level I see the need to do that and on a personal level I'm interested in what our processes are doing to the potential 10 years from now to show how this process plays out in its entirety. And so I guess I'm looking for a, a, a feel or an assurance that this, that this process will play out. Well, that's really up to the body, because we'll vote up or down, and then they have, we can have, the body has to decide what we're gonna give back to the commission. Uh, Mr. Betts, as Provocator, do you wanna say something about that? What I would say is what, what you have on the agenda is the up and down vote on, on this issue. And if you vote it down, because we are still under the terms and conditions of that ordinance, it goes back to the commission by the terms of the ordinance. Um, we can direct, under the rules of this body, the commission to consider other factors, but there's really no other motions other than those two that could actually be made because they're not noticed under the Open Meetings Act. So may I, may I ask a quick, a quick follow-up? So it's possible, as a point of clarification, to 
essentially am amend the uh, those those rules to say bypass going back to the commission conceivably. Now, that's a legal question, Mr. Butts. Not a parliamentary question. I won't act as a cunning attorney. I will give you my educated opinion. We Please. have an ordinance. The ordinance has not is is still in effect. If we reject this map under the terms of the ordinance, it goes back a number of times actually okay. for that commission to consider. That's what I need we to know. Can, we can, as a body, we can say, these are th some things we'd like you to take a look at. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, the, I, it's not that clear. The, the, it was passed as a resolution, not an ordinance, and there's a difference. The ordinance often is binding. The resolutions are not always binding. Sometimes they're not binding at all. So. It's still, oh, sure, it's on the books, but I, there are lots of residents on the book which don't say much. I would, I would challenge that judgment. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Mr. Quisenberry. Yeah, I, I would like to assure Mr. McGinty that um, per our conversations at the study session, I know I and Mr. Alex um, uh, listed some criteria that we thought would be useful to give back to the uh, commission to make another attempt at the map, and I, my, my understanding, I don't want to speak for Mr. Winkle, but my impression was that Mr. Winkle thought that those criteria uh, fell under what they could work with in the commission. So I, I have every intent to make a motion that, in, that enumerates those <coughs> items should the map fail. Mr. Nittle. Uh The last meeting I submitted uh, to everybody a guideline or a motion that I indicated verbally that I wanted this to be a motion for the next meeting. It is not on the action items for tonight, but uh, there was one request by Mr. Kurtz, which I added, and I, I see this as, as a, uh, a guideline to um, direct the commission and also uh, for the commission to work under the guidelines that we've established here. So. I, I'm not sure if the chair will allow this to be a motion that we could consider today because it fits in with what uh, well uh, I asked it to be a motion so, some of it would fit in but also some of it is you know like item number one is is not needed well I, I asked to have anybody who wanted to make any suggestions or changes to it to get back to me and I was more I, than I understand, to make I understand changes. that and I, you can I, I I'm not finished please the way what, what's the point of order What's the point of order? Well, the problem is that we're, the motion is on whether to whether to vote on map or not. So, I mean, if you want to discuss this, it should be after we vote on the map. That's fine. Further discussion? Mr. Schrader. I, I have a point of clarification. <clears throat> if <clears throat> the vote goes against this map, does that mean that this map can't be considered with changes again? or this map is completely dead? Uh, I think you, but based on the resolution, it, it's rejected. Uh, I, I I'm wondering what that the it come back if it's revised, if it's revised, it's, it's a different map. So okay. I'm just, I'm just it, could, it could come back. Perfect. That's my, my, my feeling, because okay. it's a different map. Because that, that's, that's why I want to clarify if, if I, I think the resolution down, reads either you, you, you modify the map or bring a different map. It's it could either or. Well, I, and I understand too, there's, yeah. there's, a lot of uh, um, discussion about not one map, but maybe two or three maps coming forward too. So that's I appreciate the clarification. Thank you. Hold on a second. I'll look at the reading here. Uh, what it says is that the map is rejected and then a second map is comes back so it doesn't say so it's gonna be a different map so whether it's a modification of that map that's rejected or a complete or another one it's not clear right. so the rejection. mr. Langenheim Excellent. If we re reject this map tonight, it appears to me that there are three alternatives open to the committee. 
or the commission, they can replace it, mm -hmm. they can revise it, or they can try to persuade a majority of this body to accept it. Isn't that about it? Uh, I think they don't have the third option. Because we, not the third option. Why not? Um, the second, because it does say a second map implies it would be a different map, although maybe a, a legal word person might disagree with that. But you're splitting hairs, Mr. Langenheim. I'm not speaking from politics, just logic. <laughs> you're splitting different. the logic down pretty thin. Further discussion? Bro. Mr. O'Connor. Of course. So we're not, in fact, rejecting this map. If we vote to send it back, we're voting to send it back. Well, there is a vote to reject the map and As to ask is. for a second map. As it is, yes. So if, if we're, we're, we are rejecting it at this meeting. We ask, in a way, it means we, we want a second map. We just don't want it as is. Yeah, it's really that. That's, that's right. That's really not what the motion says. Reject is a stronger word than as is. Yeah. Yeah. The motion is to accept the map. Okay? So that means a yes vote, you want the map. A no vote, you do not want the map. Is that clear? Yes. All right. Roll call, please. Alex. No. Ammons. No. Anderson. No. Benzel. Yes. Berkson. No. Betts. No. Carter. No. Coert. No. Esri. Yes. Holderfield. Yes. James. Yes. Jay. Yes. Jones. Yes. Kurtz. No. Langenheim. No. McGinty. No. Michaels. Yes. Mosier. Yes. Yeah. Nudo. Yes. O'Connor. Yes, please. Petrie. Oh, yes. No. Oh. No. Oh, I heard yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard that. Oh, uh, Ms. Petrie, one more chance. Petrie. No. <laughs> Quisenberry. No. Richards. No. Rosales. No. Sapp. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Weibel. No. Motion fails. Okay, we'll entertain motions on to send things back to the... Uh, Resisting committee, Mr. Quisenberry. The motion yeah. failed, not carried. Right? Motion failed. Yes, I, I, I'd like to uh, make a motion to give uh, some additional silence, please. Thank you. Some feedback to the commission since they will be working on another map. Um, I have in this motion, I have six items, so be, be patient. I'll go through each of those. Uh, number one, that a minimum population variance in the creation of minority majority and minority influence districts should be the highest priority. Two, compact and contiguous scores should be the next priority, and preservation of municipal boundaries should be relaxed to facilitate simpler district boundaries and allow populations on the fringe of municipalities to be combined with the municipality that they share a community of interest. Number three, Precinct lines and splits should not be considered as the county clerk will redraw the precincts after the map is passed. Four, township and municipalities should not be split in more districts than their population warrants and may not be split into more districts than their population warrants plus one. And a little uh, uh, explanation there, that means that a city like Urbana could not be split into five because its population only warrants three so it could be split into three or four. Uh, number five, while respecting the boundaries of townships and municipalities, the commission is directed to not double count these boundaries in comparing maps. And six, because time is of the essence, the commission is requested to strive to provide a new recommendation by the completion of their May, 7, May 11th meeting, and at that time provide the county board multiple maps for consideration in in that recommendation. As Steve Ziegler, Chief Assistant State's Attorney, has advised, it is acceptable under the terms of the resolution. I had a motion. Uh, is there a second? Second yeah. by Ms. Colbert. Discussion. Okay. Mr. Sapp. Uh, Sorry, Mr. Benzel. 
NATO. <laughs> I need to make a sign back here. I can't see the sign. <laughs> uh, I, I guess just a, a point of clarification uh, based off of the population suggestions that he made, um, using Urbana as an example, uh, I believe Ms. Pad was the one that mentioned at our commission meeting that the population of Urbana would be equal to 2.2 districts. So under that, under that, are we saying that Urbana would be two or no more than three? or three and no more than four. I mean, when, I, I think that's a difficult thing to draw a line through when we're gonna have variances like that where, you know, it's, it's not an exact number and it doesn't fall on an exact number. Or do we use standard routing procedures where anything below a, a five goes down and anything above goes up? I think from a commission standpoint, I think we would want some clarification on how you would want that handled. Mr. Quisenberry. Uh, th yeah, the intent, as I stated, was to, um, for a banner to be Recommend that Red Banana be split Actually, into put three. Put thing back on. There you go. But be limited to no more than four. Population warrants that it be split in split into three. It cannot fit into two districts. So, so two point two means it's three. Three. You can add one more. If it was like one point nine nine nine, it would be three. Well, yeah. to make a map, yeah. you're gonna you know break some eggs. So, go ahead. So, uh, if I may, as a follow up. Uh, essentially everything rounds up because uh, I mean we're talking about more than Urbana yeah. I mean Urbana is not the only municipality in the county so I mean uh, we can't rely on just picking one municipality to make this decision I, I think this would work in the same way for Savoy which can fit into one district but then could be could split two. into two at most I mean, how big is, not, how big is Muhammad how it's less than 18,000 yep yeah. so it works, works the same for all means. So it's really cham only Champaign and Urbana that are affected by that. What's the population of Rantoul? Mr. James? What's the popula what's population of Rantoul? What's the population of Rantoul? 13,000 okay. count the last. All right. Uh, Mr. Richards. Are we talking about townships or are we talking about municipalities? Uh, I believe you just talked about municipalities only. Because I was hearing Urbana, Urbana is Cunningham Township. I was assuming oh. we were talking about townships. Are, you, are we Ms. talking about municipalities? Quisenberry? Sorry, I had Municipalities, a conversation correct? Right. That's this formula? Uh, Not Actually, it's a, it, the, the, the texts I used were township and municipalities. Township and municipalities. Okay, just wondering. Okay. Uh, Mr. McGinty. I'll just say briefly, I um, heard loud and clear from the commission, uh, who I'm interested in working with, that they wanted specifics. These seem like reasonable specifics. Um, I think that these are, this is a, a very sound list that provides additional flexibility to the commission to have um, additional options. and. I think the board, I've heard from enough board members to hear also that, that they're interested in, in multiple maps. And, I, and James, I'm not sure, but was it specified in there as well? I did not. Yes, point, point six requests that they, they provide multiple, multiple maps. Multiple maps, okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, Mr. Benzel? Sorry, I don't mean to hog the microphone. I've had two turns already. All right, okay, we'll go with Ms. Ammons. A great, great process. Um, I just want to ask uh, quickly that the consideration of the multiple maps, the maps can be considered from public or from RPC. Is that correct? Well, all the maps have been submitted to RPC, I believe. So I'm not, could you clarify? I'm not sure what you mean. The, um, any other organization can submit a map to Andrew Levy? Is to the that commission. I, what, what's the process of accepting uh, uh, other maps in this process? Okay, well, what does it say? Um, Right. They can't assume that these rules have been followed. No, well, no, that's the, well, that's, uh, we, we've had maps submitted to the commission, and the commission has gone, you know, looked at the various attributes of them. I'm not, is that what you, I'm not sure, are you saying? That? So that's what I'm asking. Basically, if, if the NAACP wanted to submit a map right now, 
and they wanted to submit them out to the commission sure. for consideration for the county board to consider the map. What is the process for that to take place? I think they'd have to submit it to the commission and the commission, well, I guess the commission would have to could pass it on to us or not, I suppose. Uh, Mr. Richards, you're a member of that commission? Yeah, I was just going to say I can't obviously the commission would have to put it forward to get it to the county board but it's been the commission's policy that every map that so far including the richards map that's been done on the inside or outside the commission has accepted and placed on file however every one of those has been done with the rpc software so that uh, it's, it's been able to be imported into there so as, f as far as the first step if the naacp made a map with uh, bard or arc software just like the Farm Bureau and I and a couple other people did, and fed it into the system for Andrew to, to churn out, the president would be for the commission to, pl to place it on the map pile. Uh, there's nothing that compels the commission, though, to, to send it forward, but it, it would be, if you turn in a map, it's considered by the commission. To answer your question, Zemmons? Okay, uh, Ms. Uh, we need to go with Ms. Holderfield. Um, I, I had thought that any map, regardless of who it was, the, the public and organization could submit a map. However, um, all of the maps would be put through the same requirements that all of the maps that have are one e revised, whatever, um, that they have to all go through the same requirements. So, I, don't, I never heard that you couldn't submit a map and it wouldn't be brought for consideration. So what I would like to have happen is regardless of who does, who submits, who presents a map, now that we're sending this back, if there are more maps that come forward, if we just continue to follow the process that we gave the commission to follow for all maps for consideration. Ms. Berkson, microphone please. With regard to uh, the same rules as for the communities and municipalities should go for communities of interest. The minorities are 26, over 26 percent of the county, and yet they're only well represented in one district. And it seems to me, it's, uh, since they are two and three quarters districts worth of the population, they should have a bigger proportion in more than just that one district because they are a very small proportion in all the others. Ms. Ms. Anderson. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but in regard to what Ms. Holderfeld said, I thought I remembered that anyone could draw a map, but they were welcome to come in and use the software in this, in this facility. I believe that that is still a possibility, I think. I thought that's what was required, Member. Right. Ron. I mean, I think the, uh, the the station is still up and operating. Uh, Mr. McGinty. Perhaps this is something that one of the commission members can clarify for me, but it seems to me that we are at the point of the process and in time frames that require us to now, as a board, give the commission specific direction and that there's been ample opportunity for the submission of maps to this point. Um, several have submitted maps. They have gone through the process. I'm perfectly satisfied with that, but now we need to do our job, which is to now uh, provide some give and take to the commission to finish the job. Now, if I'm missing something, please correct me because I'm, I'm not sure, but it seems to me that that's the logical path from here is we give them specifics. They come back to us with the results of what we've requested and that other maps um, I, I don't know how we get those into play at this point. Well, I, if I can comment on that, I think that if those maps fall within the, bound, within the, the, the boundaries or whatever we tell the commission to do, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, let's go with Ms. Michaels. Thank you. Um, I, maybe I'm a little confused here or something, and I, I appreciate the parameters um, that Mr. Quisenberry has put in front of us. But as we look at that and we think, and we add up 11, if there's a possibility of three, four in Urbana, you're gonna have another four, five in Champaign, I really would hate to see the rural only end up with three. So I think we need to be very careful that 11 really isn't as big a number as you think, and we need to make sure we follow the process. I can appreciate the process. Thank 
Uh, Ms. Petrie. Um, I have one clarification question for Mr. Quisenberry, and then I might have a follow-up for Mr. Levy. Um, in the criteria that you've laid out, Mr. Quisenberry, are you uh, weighting that criteria <coughs> in any manner? We discussed that last um, week as a possibility. Uh, I can I can speak to that um, uh, right now. Uh, Ms. Busey is passing out the text, so if anybody wants to read read in detail, it'll be available shortly. Um, items one and two do imply priority. Um, I I would hesitate to provide a, a lot of guidance with regard to priority because we specified what the commission should do in the original resolution. Um, some amount of priority uh, emphasis is required because they, they acted under the original um, criteria and did not develop a map that was passed. So so some clarification on um, the weighting of population variance and uh, the weighting of majority, uh, minority majority and minority influence districts I thought was necessary and also um, some um, um, weighting of the compact and contiguous scores because the map we saw was not one of the higher rated maps. Uh, may I have a follow up question with Mr. Levy? Go ahead. A Andrew? Oh, Mr. Levy? Yeah. Uh, when we had the conversation last week concerning the uh, basically triple counting of the boundaries, precincts, townships, and municipalities. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, you indicated that um, that did skew the statistics a bit, and, and the gentleman who spoke during public participation also uh, indicated that, and that had, had something also to do with the contiguous scores. So at Mr. Quisenberry's suggestion, eliminating precinct boundaries as a, a binding criteria, uh, that will or, not, will or will not be helpful in drawing the map. Uh, or maps, I should say. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I pulled out three, three questions out of that. <laughs> Only three? <laughs> um, to answer the the last question, will it help create a create a map that might be more desirable? I believe it will. That is, that will uh, that was a very that was a, a that large was constraint. Constraining. That was very, right. very much a constraint. Now uh, the triple counting. Uh, I don't believe I spoke to that previously. Um, there was the, the way that the software was run. There was no way for it to be triple counted. Those were simply reports of numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, so so there was no triple counting. But it was all three of them were weighed. So they were all used as factors. But they weren't. You know there wouldn't be a triple count for all of them lining up on a single boundary. Um, the issue of compactness. Uh, we did hear from the public at the study session that that, that was an issue. Uh, I believe that the way it's the way it's handled in this proposal uh, will work. Uh, but I will remind you all that compactness is a very general measure, uh, and and we'll we'll make sure that that that's brought forward as well uh, with with the next map. Okay, I have two follow up questions. And if it another boundary was relaxed, such as manip municipalities or the townships. Would that facilitate um, the mapping process? You know, all, all of those are constraints. Uh, so it really depends on the will of the board whether those boundaries are important enough to maintain or whether uh, the desire for this map uh, goes beyond those those boundary lines. Okay, th that's the information. And then my last one is, uh, Mr. Quisenberry has this sort of listed in an implicit order of sort of importance or weighting. Um, is that, um, oh, I'm trying hard not to poison the well with the way I ask this question. Um, since you mentioned previously that all the criteria in the resolution was given equal weight, the suggestion here or the implication here is that things will not be given equal weight uh, in your judgment of having done now 23 maps, uh, can
can you talk about uh, what you would uh, anticipate as being a significant difference due to a changing of the weighting factor? The, the way that we handle that is our, our simple trade-offs. Um, we try and achieve uh, the best option based on a, on a map scenario that is generated. Um, what we would do in, this, in the case of, of these suggestions uh, is really focus in on the population uh, is what I'm hearing. We, we provided four alternatives that had very good uh, population deviations previously. Uh, we can go back and revise uh, again um, to, to try and fit better into the desires that we're hearing tonight. Thank you very much. I'll let you hang around. Uh, Mr. Alex. Um, I had, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little disorganized here. Uh, one comment to Ms. Berkson's comment about racial uh, representation and whether you could, in fact, draw multiple majority minority or minority influence districts. Um, I don't want to put. I don't want to speak to the experience of the mappers because I haven't actually sat down and tried to do this process, but I know from past political causes I've been involved with in Champaign in the city of Urbana that it is in fact very difficult to draw uh, multiple minority districts within the city of Urbana, let alone Champaign County. The, a lot of the guidelines for trying to draw minority districts go back to a time when in communities that were unfortunately, you know, ghettoized, where it was easy to say, hey, you know, the minorities live on this side of town and the white folks live on this side of town. I think it's somewhat uh, salutary that Champaign County doesn't, <laughs> isn't quite uh, segregated enough to make that process easy. So I'm not sure, although I, I, I like the sentiment behind your, your suggestion, I'm not sure it's actually possible to draw multiple majority minority districts based on the, the district populations we're talking about. And now I'd like to offer, I guess, two suggestions, and I would hope that these might be accepted as friendly amendments. They're both very minor. Make the, okay, sorry. go ahead. Okay, I, I, would, I, would motion, I would make a motion to amend Mr. Quisenberry's motion as follows. Uh, first, to delete the words reject the map and from the first line because that's already been dealt with by another motion. So just take out, we want motion to motion to give? Motion to give, right. that's right. So strike, reject the map and. And then um, in, uh, in recognition of uh, a point that uh, Ms. Michaels brought up, uh, in point number two, there's language that says, allow populations on the fringe of municipalities to be combined with the municipality. I'd like to change that. I would propose to amend that to say, allow populations on the fringe of municipalities to be combined with or excluded from the municipality if they share a community of interest. And that would make it clear that the intent here is to allow squaring off of boundaries. And if that means you, know, you bring in a subdivision that's just outside a community or you push a subdivision that's sort of off in the corner of a community out into a rural district that we're not trying to prejudice that one way or the other. Okay, is there any objection to that? Then we, can, we can consider a friendly amendment if there's no objection. Okay, thank you, Mr. Quisenberry. Yeah, I, I do consider that a friendly amendment. Ms. Culler? Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Betts? I guess the, the question I have, it, it can actually concerns in Mr. Quisenberry's uh, motion, which is, I think is a salutary motion. Um, where it says uh, recommendation by the completion of May 16th meeting and at that time provide the county board multiple maps for consideration in that rec you know, recommendation by Steve uh, Ziegler. I think that we should be more explicit and say including those submitted as a minority report um, as part of that. Because oh. we're, never, we're never going to see anything that, from the minority on this commission if we don't do that. So are you saying that you want a single minority report map? No, or, I'm, oh. I'm saying th that as, as it, that needs to be included as part of the oh. work of the commission, the minority motion. report. Are you making a motion? I'm, I'm suggesting that we need to do that if we're ever going to see it. Oh, well, you don't have, Mr. Mr. Langham, we don't have floor, Mr. Noodle. Mr. Noodle? Well, having heard what Tom just said, I, I'll break it off into two pieces here. Uh, Mr. Alex made a great point about the fact that uh, it, it is almost impossible to have more than one majority-minority map uh, district in the in the thing. And 
I, I guess what I'm concerned about with Mr. Quisenberry's number one is um, that why is that the highest pri priority? Uh, Diane brought up why isn't rural interest the highest priority? Why isn't uh, other special interests? Uh, I think what we're doing here, I, I don't. I am all for the process. I am all for Mr. Quisenberry's request to the, give guidance to the, uh, the commission. I am not for changing the resolution. Uh, which it stands as th that's how they used it that's how they came up with the maps and and to try and change some of these things now here in midstream uh, is not a good thing to do for the Commission secondly um, there are seven citizens selected by uh, the chair and four board members and the maps come forward on the basis of that vote why would we have a vote to push forward a map that is defeated now, if, if those people who are on the commission make a case that the seven citizens in particular are interested in moving forward, I'm all for that. But why would the commission, if they're supposed to be independent of this group, push forward a map that fails? That makes no sense. What it is allowing to do is getting political in this process. And I, I fail to see where a minority, a map that has failed because seven citizens have looked at it a little bit more independent than our four people uh, on the board. I fail to see why we have to push forward a map that's been defeated. Now that, that is just circumventing A, the commission's independence and B, makes it political. And, and just one more thing. If Mr. Quisenberry would, would either remove number one or put priorities for all special interests, I would be in favor of it. But I am not in favor of putting one segment in favor of others. I, I, you know, Diane makes a great point. Why, you know, most cases, county government is all rural representatives have. Yeah. And here we are saying, no, we want to have more municipal districts and we want to take away from, from uh, rural areas. That, that just doesn't make sense to me. So I would hope that he would make a revision to that. Mr. Langenheim. Two points. One, I think what we really want is a board that represents the political interests of the entire populace of the county in proportion to their numbers. Secondly, the notion that this commission is independent of this board doesn't really address the fact that the product of the commission has to be approved by the board. Mr. Mosier. I think I'm one of the representatives of the biggest minority in this county, and that's Champaign County Farmers. And this board's the only board we've got to go to with our problems, and we're controlled by a lot of what this board does with several aspects of how this county runs and I haven't heard one one minute of discussion about what are you going to do with the farmers in this county we don't have any population but we certainly have a lot of area out there that needs representation Mr. Kurtz uh, <clears throat> as a commissioner uh, uh, in our commission we uh, did not reject as Mr. Winkle corrected himself uh, we didn't reject any of the maps. Uh, they weren't at all defeated. They were just set aside, and 1E was placed forward. Any of those maps can be resurrected in the commission at any time to be looked at. And if the commission decides to push forward a Thorsland map or a Richards map or any of the others, they can do so. It doesn't hold them back from looking at those maps once again. Mr. Betts. I have to address something here that I would be derelict in my moral duties as a human being not to raise the issue. The reason for Baker versus Carr, which is one person, one vote, is because there was over-representation by rural residents, and that's what went to the Supreme Court. To say that the, there's discrimination against rural residents comparable to 300 years of discrimination against African Americans in this society in which it took a civil war, a hundred years to pass the Voting Rights Act 
to try to undo invidious historic discrimination in voting in, in this country and to say that there has been discrimination against farmers on the parallel level as there was and still is against African Americans and other minorities in this society, that is the most absurd, ridiculous statement I have heard in a long time on this board. There is a difference between invidious historical racial discrimination and rural impact. There's a very big difference. Uh, Mr. Christenberry. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to speak to a couple things where I'm gonna disagree with Mr. Nudo and then agree with him a little bit. Um, the reason why number one is the way it is is because that's, that's the law. And um, I see that uh, minimum population variance is a, is a route to make sure that neither municipalities nor rural are overly represented. Um, but I would also say that I am, there, you don't see anything in here about directing uh, the commission to consider a specific map or maps because I, I was listening pretty carefully and I, I, I guess I agree with um, Mr. Winkle that if we, if we tell the commission what map to look at, they're, they're not really a commission. And so this is, this is focused strictly on criteria it's focused strictly on helping the commission weigh the criteria that are in front of them based on our guidance. Frankly, they could take this and ignore it and send us another map that's just like 1E. E. Um, and I don't think that would be a very good idea. But this is, this is our, our advice to them to give us a map or maps, preferably, that we would accept. I suppose they could give us 23 maps, too. Uh, Ms. Berkson, microphone please. Just from what Mr. Mosier said, that the farmers don't have much numbers, but they have a, land, a lot of land out there. The fact is it's one person, one vote, not one acre, one vote. Mr. Alex. Um, I wanted to make a couple of observations about Mr. Quisenberry's motion. One is that I, I wanted to make it clear. I, I, I don't see this as a replacement of the existing charge to the redistricting commission. I mean, the re existing charge to the redistricting commission specifically discusses looking at respecting communities of interest, respecting rural representation, and I, I certainly don't think the intent here is to is to say stop looking at continue communities of interest or rural representation. I do think those are important, and I think that needs to be understood that this isn't a, you know this is additional thing. This is additional guidance. This is not a repudiation of the legitimate criteria that they've already been given. Uh, the other uh, comment I was going to make is I think you know Mr. Quisenberry said it well. It's the law. I mean, I think. We can argue here over whether you know the Democrats are getting a raw deal, the Republicans are getting a raw deal, farmers are getting a raw deal, urban residents are getting a raw deal, but that's something that we can settle in this room. If the map has excessive population variance or it doesn't adequately respect minority voters' interests, that's going to be settled in a courtroom. And I think no matter what, if there's anything we can all agree on, we need to make sure that the map we approve is going to, is going to stand up and not get us dragged into a court fight. So I wouldn't be too... I wouldn't see this fact that the, that the motion says, hey, the most important thing is equal population and, and majority minority. To me, that's just the map's got to be legal, and then all other factors are things that we need to work out amongst ourselves. Mr. Rosales. I have a, I have a friendly request that whenever the maps are presented, if you could bring a PowerPoint or something to put on the screen so our viewing audience could at least have a comparison of what's being presented to us because we have a, a list of maps, but I believe it was Ron Benzel last a week that indicated that he would like to also see an overlay, and I think it was Mr. Carter that would like to see an overlay so we could see comparisons from what the current districts are to what the 304 proposed districts will look like, and so that the audience at least could be following uh, as we take a vote on this. Yeah, I would like to see it on the screen. We'll try to accommodate that. Further discussion, Mr. Carter. I don't know it yet. They'll take Einstein to look at that map and see who is hurt. If you pass that map, I wouldn't even live in. I have my uh, district clean out of the existing, 
And I don't know why you can't see that with the uh, but we're not we're population. Not talking about incumbency here. You move District 5 Let with talk. clean talk. west. I mean, just take the clean west. And all you left was a little jar, a little spot there on the map. For what would be the old District 5. Now, if you can't see, that's not, that's just not fair. And, and uh, I don't know what is 2011. And it seems yet we do, we have learned to give each other consideration in this country. I just it, it's sad, really. It's it's really legal. sad. It's first of all, it's a Mr. Legal. James. Well, all the comments have been made. Some of them are really good, I think. But I guess what bothers me is when the commission was going through this, uh, everybody had the chance to go there and voice some of these concerns to the commission as they were going through the process. Some did. Patsy, I'm sure did. Uh, but my problem is I keep hearing all this and we beat it around. I, for one, when it was brought to our caucus and that, you know, the, the numbers were brought, everything was brought. Uh, I think they're doing as they were uh, chartered to do. I think, yes, we, we should look at it. If there's any major infractions that they don't approve, we should do. And then I hear these arguments about minority or majority. Uh, and then I hear a comment made, let's bring a, a, a map up due to uh, the minority faction of the group. Well. In this chamber, there's a lot of us that sometimes do not agree with the vote. We are the minority, but we accept it and we move on and we do the best with it. It always seems like those that sometimes don't get what they want want to come up with another solution to get what they want. And we all need to just move on with it. It's what the majority wants. One man, one vote, majority. And, and I think that's where it ought to lie. Now, some of the tweaking that they have talked about, if the commission wants to accept it, good. Uh, that's their prerogative. But let's let them do their job as it was outlined and within those parameters. And again, if we don't like it, go to the meetings. Quit beating them up here. I point out we are have a motion on the floor with these changes, so if we could talk about that. Ms. Ammons, did you have a comment? I wanted to call a question. Let's go with Mr. Schrader. Has that chance to speak on this particular motion go ahead mr Schrader. thank you just um want to add that <clears throat> what what the main motion getting back to the main motion uh, these are things that we talked about that uh mr quisenberry and mr alex talked about study session and <clears throat> these are things i think mr winkle wouldn't have a problem with as chair and i don't have a problem with um these are things that Robert's rule says when the question is called, you have to. I did not recognize it. You cannot interrupt. I have to recognize you for that call. No, I did. No. I, I asked you if you had a comment. I'm sorry. Oh. I feel the decision of the chair. Uh, I'll, okay, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Schrader. She did call the question. A vote I had on the, my hand up for a long time. I understand Mr. that, but that was my error. However, we need to vote on that. The vote is to call the question. Show of hands to call the question. Motion fails. Thank you. you need two-thirds vote. Mr. Schrader, continue. I'll, I'll just finish up quickly here. If it's possible, could the portions of the minutes to the committee of the whole that deal with this be present with the commission or the commissioners please if, if at all possible tomorrow night uh, well mr quisenberry got this out in about two seconds so i know <laughs> we can do our best but i can't guarantee it because the clerk just went home sick well we'll make okay. sure they get this motion though uh, obviously okay thank you okay uh, mr carter we want to vote I, he, we had, I'm sorry, we need to call the question here. Uh, do we want a roll call vote, folks? Let's have a roll call vote, okay? A yes vote means you w agree with this motion as presented by Mr. Quisenberry. No, you do not want it. That's correct. Okay, roll call Ms. Busey. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Mr. Just, just a clarification real quick. This does not include Mr. Betts's recommendation of a minority. He did not make that okay. without a motion. He did not make a motion. He did not make it without a motion. He did not move Okay. Okay. <coughs> Alex. Yes. Ammons. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Benzel. No. 
Berkson. Yes. Betts. Yes. Carter. Yes. Cowart. Yes. Esri. No. Holderfield. No. James. No. Jay. Yes. Jones. No. Kurtz. Yes. Langenheim. Yes. McGinty. Yes. Michaels. Yes. Mosier. Yes. Nudo. Yes. O'Connor. No. Petrie. Yes. Quisenberry. Yes. Richards. Yes. Rosales. Yes. Sapp. No. Schrader. Yes. Weibel. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, I want to point out one last item. There's a card on your desk about Lincoln in Illinois. It's closing May 27th, so get to the courthouse and visit if you can. It's, it's pretty good. I've seen it. And then, Mr. Carter. I'd just like to say, it's written here in black and white. If you reject the map, it goes back. So what we've been, so what we've been saying is just going over and over. <laughs> We send it back, Mr. Carter. Just say it goes back. It's ready. We're doing that. We're doing that. So how come we have to vote? Oh, I see. We're adjourned.